This is a Fox News alert. Police saying the suspect in an Aurora, Illinois, industrial park shooting has been neutralized. According to the city of Aurora, four police officers were wounded in the incident and are in stable condition. We go now to Jonathan Hunt for the latest. Jonathan. Dana, the first 911 calls came in at around 1.40 central time, that's 2.40 p.m. Eastern. We do not know from officials how this incident played out exactly. We're expecting a news conference with local police and other officials at the bottom of the hour. They will give us uh, the blow-by-blow -blow of what they know. But what we have heard from eyewitnesses is that a worker at the Henry Pratt Company, which is the building you're looking at right there checked in for work like it was any normal day this morning and several hours later suddenly began running through that building in the words of this eyewitness quote shooting everyone uh, we know officially now that four police officers were wounded in this we assume and it is only an assumption at this point that they were among the first officers Officers to respond after those initial 911 calls. We are also being told that all four of those are in stable condition. Beyond that, we do not know the extent of their injuries. We also do know, though, that the coroner is now on scene. Obviously, a coroner is only called in if there are bodies to be dealt with. So, we, again, our assumption here with the coroner on scene seen is that at least one person is dead. Whether that is a victim or whether that is indeed the shooter, we do not know. Uh, the language that officials have used regarding the shooter has changed. The first word we got was from the city of Aurora. They said the shooter had been, quote, apprehended. Then a city of Aurora spokesman later changed that, talking with uh, Shep's news team to the shooter has been new Neutralized. And then Aurora police said the shooter is no longer a threat. So all of these questions, what is the condition of the shooter? What is the condition of those injured? We hope to get some answers to in the next 30 minutes or so. But the bottom line, there has been a mass shooting in Aurora, Illinois, west of Chicago. Uh, the shooter is neutralized, whatever that means, according to officials. There is no longer a threat. Schools in the area went on immediate lockdown. They have now been told they can lift that lockdown and parents can go and pick up their children. So a sense of relief now that uh, the area was flooded with first responders, SWAT officers. Uh, we saw them at one point rushing into the building and that appeared to be coincide with those first reports we got that the shooter had been apprehended. Now we have seen a lot of those first responders standing around far more relaxed fashion, weapons down. Clearly the threat is over as Aurora police have told us, but we wait now, Dana, to find out the details from officials of exactly what prompted this shooting and exactly what is the condition of those four police officers who were hurt and any other people who were shot in this attack, Dana. Thank you, Jonathan. We appreciate it. We're monitoring any developments out of Aurora, Illinois, as Jonathan said, and we will update you as we get them. President Trump fighting back against critics during a fiery Rose Garden news conference where he officially declared a national emergency on the southern border. We're going to be signing today and registering national emergency and it's a great thing to do because we have an invasion of drugs, invasion of gangs, invasion of people, and it's unacceptable. I could do the wall over a longer period of time. I didn't need to do this, but I'd rather do it much faster. And I don't have to do it for the election. I've already done a lot of wall for the election, 2020. And the only reason we're up here talking about this is because of the election. Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi blasting the decision as a, quote, power grab. They're also signaling that Democrats are ready to fight it out in the courts. President Trump sarcastically responding to any potential legal challenges. We will have a national emergency and we will then be sued and they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, uh, even though it shouldn't be there. 
and we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court. <laughs> okay, that, yeah, this, you've been talking about how this has been a, a civics lesson. The last yeah. three, he's right. That's, it's not just how the bill becomes a law, it's then how the bill goes to court. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he said it in such a kind of a, a, a nice sing-songy yeah, way that even a child you. like, and then this happens. <laughs> um, okay, so the thing that you, we have to remind everybody when you're, when you're listening to smug reporters, that when the caravans were here, it was a national emergency. At that time, America was being compared to Nazi Germany because we were separating Remember, we were separating families and putting children in cages. Uh, it was a horrifying humanitarian crisis. So you finally get the president to agree that this is an unacceptable situation and we should apply some solutions. And suddenly the Democrats are mocking it. Oh, it's no, no longer an emergency, um, even though we said that it was like Nazi Germany just months ago. So for the media and for the Democrats, the carav caravan is a national emergency until it's no longer visual. So... What you're left with are adults trying to solve the underlying issue that led to this crisis, which is, I mean, think about this, whether it is terror or mass shootings, uh, you don't just assume everything is fine when the attack is over. You go back, you figure out how do you prevent that? That's all that's going on right now. And to laugh at this and say it's not a humanitarian crisis, you were the same people screaming bloody murder. That it was. That it was. We actually have some, we have some sound from one of the exchanges with a reporter. You're gonna to wanna to talk about this, Pete. Take a listen. What do you say to your critics who say that you are creating a national emergency, that you're concocting a national emergency here in order to get your wall. I, I asked the angel moms, ways. what do you think? Do you think I'm creating something? Ask these incredible women who lost their daughters and their sons. Okay? Because your question is a very political question. Because you have an agenda. Uh, no, no, you get I, one. I, you get well, one. Well, the Ready? second Just question sit down. Is, Wait, sit down. Sit down. Could you, could you please sit answer? Sit down. You get one um, question. Pete? You're I, sitting. I said the same Stand thing up, Pete. Kids last night. <laughs> sit, 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 sit. I will say, you talked about visuals, Greg. Yeah. The angel moms were the most powerful part of this press conference. Mm -hmm. He used them in his opening remarks. And then when Jim Acosta tried to come at him and use the stats to talk about the stats, he said, there you are. The left does the emotional visual so well, so often. And we rarely see that from conservatives or Republicans because we no, talk stats. No, if you stats. do, they get made fun of. Yeah, they get made fun of. We talk <laughs> stats. But that visual right there, these are people affected by this. And the comparison is, remember when the left and the media went wall to wall on the very unfortunate circumstance where the two kids who were handed over to ICE in custody mm -hmm. as their parents brought them on the perilous journey passed away after everything we do for them? That was wall to wall coverage. There's almost no coverage other than this channel on these angel moms and these circumstances when illegals go wrong. That's the point the president is making. I think a lot of people watching this feel that viscerally. Mm -hmm. And did Acosta ask President Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and all the Democrats, did he, did he stop them and say, you know, is this a manufactured humanitarian crisis when they were all out there calling? I, there were clips of Obama and Pelosi and all these Democrats calling it and acknowledging that this was a humanitarian crisis. No reporters questioned them on it. They all said, oh, yeah, they want to address it. They want to do something about it. He had no choice but to do this now emergency. This was not he my first choice. He did have a choice. I mean, he could have taken the original deal, which was terrible. He could have taken this, this new bill that's an atrocity, as I said yesterday. But the bottom line is, as I said yesterday also, it's either a national emergency or it's not. And he was in a position now where he felt like there's no, no movement for me here. I'm not getting any help from Democrats. They're not interested at this point in calling this what it is, which is a national emergency, because to do that would give me a victory in 2020 or would give some credence to what I've been saying. So unless I actually declare this and figure out a way to move some of this money around, I'm not going to get the money for the wall. They're not interested in the barriers. And they put so many obstacles forth in this spending bill that, you know, you can't have this type of wall. You can't have a wall of that type in this place, enabling towns and counties. Can't disrupt that, the butterflies. Right, you can't do yeah. anything, essentially. Let me uh, so. mention one that um, in my ear, they tell me that... Uh, just FYI, the House Judiciary Committee has announced that they are launching an immediate investigation into this executive action. They've sent letters to the president to that effect. Uh, let's get your thoughts. You haven't spoken yet. Well, I think the key thing for me is that the Justice Department told him is a high litigation risk with this strategy. I don't think there's an emergency of any kind. To say there's a humanitarian crisis, well, I guess there was a humanitarian crisis in December. I guess it was a humanitarian crisis two years ago. So you don't want to two fix it? Let me finish. And so you have a situation where 
he didn't declare an emergency then. Now, today, and I think this was telling, he says, you know what, I don't need to do this, but I'd rather do it faster. Boy, if I was a lawyer, I'd say, uh, Your Honor, the president said he doesn't need to do this. There's no invasion. There's nobody attacking America. This is not a military When another situation. child dies, you will change so your mind. This is a situation where I think it was Ann Coulter, a real conservative, who said the only national emergency is the president is an idiot. And that <laughs> yeah, was so, that. so now you agree with Ann Coulter. And so she, this is, she changes her me, mind every day how But she to feels me, about you look at the idea of the national emergency, and what I see is that you guys are saying, well, maybe because you want to support the president. I can appreciate no, that. No, no, no. But I got to tell you something. The Wall Street Journal editorial page, National Review. I could even go on the number of Republicans in the Senate, including Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority, who tried to get the Prince to say, don't do this because. There's one day going to be President Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, oh, and boy, don't you don't want to give her oh, this authority. But I, you know what? I just what's great now is I want to I, I want to hear the Dems tell me that fentanyl is no longer a problem, right. human trafficking is no longer a problem, gang violence is no longer a problem, sexual abuse is no longer a problem. The Dems are walking into a huge trap. It's already happening. You Dude, saw it with Beto. Wall down. Yeah, no. That. All you have to do. Can we play that? Yeah, sure. Watch go this. Hmm. If you could, would you take the wall down now? Here. Yes. Like you have a wall. Absolutely. Knock it down. I'd take the wall and down. And do you think the city, you think if, this, if there's a referendum here in this city, that would pass? I do. It's cost us tens of billions of dollars to build and to maintain. And it has pushed migrants and asylum seekers and refugees to the most inhospitable, the most hostile stretches of the U.S.-Mexico border, ensuring their suffering and death. So that'll come back. Well, no, okay, oh, yeah. this is, so. we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, that if they believe something is immoral, shouldn't you remove the existing immorality? Yeah. Yeah. And that is the existing walls. So it's a trap that they've walked into, and now he says yes, and you know who else said yes? Kirsten Gillibrand. Is it Gillibrand? Or Gillibrand. Gillibrand. Whatever. Anyway, right. the point is, now... Gillibrand, thank you. Uh, so the fact is, each one is now going to be faced with this question wherever they go, and they're going to have to, they have two choices, remove the immorality, or side with Trump. It's not yeah. a and case Kirsten. of like, Kirsten. <laughs> it's not a case of how of, of whether the national emergency is now or two months ago. The president has said it's an emergency for that long. Not, yeah, Congress months. can't figure it out. They can't address it. They haven't been able to deal with the emergency as a result. As the executive who's charged with our security, right. he says, I have to take it in my What's own secure? hands. What's secure? It's not a security issue. Drugs. It's, it's, it's not is, uh, drug trafficking. And drugs. Trafficking. They're Listen, lying about the okay, stats on the board. Let's, when right, let's, let's, comes let's down, go. Let's go. We got to run. No, let me finish up built. here. Well, you know, when the president says, oh, this is about drugs, most drugs come through legal ports of entry. When the president no says, of. When the president says it's about illegal immigration, guess what? Illegal immigration is down substantially, like radically, since 2000. What about the because of walls. Said, oh my! No, it's not trash. because. No of problems here. And you talk about walls. This is there are other ways. There's you guys, spending. You have to run. We got to go. You know, to me, it's like you don't want to hear it. So, okay. Yeah, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> twist in the Jesse Smollett case. Talking about it for a year. Breaking details to you next. Who's out of Chicago? Police arresting two suspects in the alleged hate crime attack on Empire actor Jesse Smollett. It's the latest new twist in that mysterious but developing story. Chicago police now say they are holding two men identified in security video from the area where Smollett says he was attacked. Smollett claiming two people hurled racist, homophobic slurs at him and told him, quote, this is MAGA country. The suspects have now been identified by police as Nigerian brothers, police saying one of them worked on the set of Empire. On Wednesday, Smollett was asked by ABC if the men on the security video were his attackers. I don't have any doubt in my mind that that's them. Never did. This follows reports by local news outlets that the attack on Smollett was a hoax. Police later responding to that saying it was not a hoax and that Smollett, quote, continues to be treated as a victim, not a suspect. Jedediah, mm -hmm. it's a, such a strange story. It seems to change. But we had these reports uh, in Chicago suggesting that maybe this was something that was staged mm -hmm. with yeah. these men. One of them had been an extra on the Empire show. Uh, because Smollett was worried that he was going to be written out of the script of Empire. What do you make Which of Which Fox Entertainment came out and said that's not true. He wasn't going to be written out of that. I don't know. It's interesting. And where did those reports originate from? Because what, once those reports came out, the Chicago local police came out immediately and said 
there's, we're not going to substantiate this. He's not being investigated. We are not confirming these reports. I don't know what happened here, and I don't think any of us do, and it remains to be seen. That's why an investigation needs to happen. The thing that interests me most still is his phone records, though, because now he has turned over his phone records 13 days later, but they're redacted. They're not complete. And, you know, the police that are working with him are saying, listen, can you hand this stuff over? Because in the form that you're handing them over, there's not enough information here for us to be able to tell if you were on the phone with your agent and people were making racist or homophobic slurs in the background. We need to be able to hear that so that we can figure out what happened here. We can corroborate your story and we can get the people who did. So my only struggle with this story is why has he not turned that over? And if he wants this, this to be a criminal investigation, without that information, it doesn't meet the burden of proof for a criminal investigation. So that's, that's my struggle here. Why not? Why not just hand them over? Well, I mean, he, he says that the reason that he didn't do that is because there are important people in the in yeah. his phone and his yeah. family. And also he says, you know, he's a gay man and he has pictures there. He's not doesn't want everybody to see them. So, Pete, what's, what's interesting is, of course, the subtext of this is people saying, well, maybe this guy made it up. Maybe it's a, he's attacking uh, President Trump and make America great again and the hat. So he says in the interview what, he wouldn't need to mention a MAGA hat because that's like putting a cherry on a racist Sunday. He said these men called him <laughs> a homophobic slur and the N-word. Well, I don't know. I mean, we, we, the, it, none of it adds up. We don't know. Right. So I'm not going to say what did or did not happen. Listen, I, the MAGA hat could be the point or, or the cherry on top. Who, 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 who knows? I've never, I, I still don't like at all the idea of hate crimes. Good. Either you commit a crime. No, no, a no, no, in a different way. <laughs> Either you commit a crime or you don't. Oh, what see. the motivation in your heart is actually doesn't matter at all. Whether you're a racist or a homophobe or whatever, if you mug someone, you rape someone, you assault someone, you're committing a crime. Right. I don't care what your motivations are. So the whole conversation to me here is absurd. If he made it up, it was probably to make a point or for, for an arterial motive about Trump or about racism. I don't know. If he didn't, it's an unfortunate circumstance we may not get to the bottom of. It all feels icky to me. And I just, I, I, I don't know where it goes. So Dana, one of the interesting angles on this is, could it be that he's the victim? Derek Johnson, the head of the NAACP, saying today the media is demonizing the victim. Well, I, I, this is kind of a weird thing, right? Because the media is covering a story, and one of the things that they complained about was the media using the word allegedly. Okay, but actually, that's just AP style. That's like how, what you are taught in journalism school, Ron, right? Like they were make they were complaining about using the word allegedly. Like, well, no, that's actually what you do in these things. So I would say uh, justice is slow. And oftentimes we want things in a second, right? If we press a button, the food delivery comes like we want it immediately. And justice takes a long time. So we have to give the investigators a little bit more. So Greg, he seems to say that these are the guys who did it, right? Yeah. He did say that if these, if he had said that they were Muslim or Mexican, maybe more people would have believed them, but they're black guys, Nigerians. Well, this is where the, again, the media narrative goes up in smoke. I, I, I appreciate how careful and restrained we are on this story and how careful and restrained the media is everywhere on this story. Nothing like the Covington story. You want to compare stories. Yes. Compare, let's compare the Covington story to the Smollett story, okay? There are two, there are two similar, there's the similarity in the rush to judge a specific group. In this case, it was the Covington kids. In this case, it, were, it was a racist, homophobic, uh, uh, mysterious man. It turns out that half of that is gone. It's not racist. Right. So that part of the piece is gone. But the media will not the, the media will adjust their narrative without admitting their error. They won't say, whoops, we were wrong on that. Maybe it's just a homophobic attack. To your point, it, it's an attack. Yeah. But it's like they, 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 they kind of ignore the fact that they were wrong on that, as well as attributing this to an atmosphere that encourages hostility. This whole thing like, well, this is happening in Trump's America, even if it's a strange story with a lot of weird holes and some things don't make sense. But you know what? It's about surging hostility. It's about and it's about smearing Trump and Trump values, modern day lynchings. Those were the words that were being used. A lot of this stuff happened at the beginning in the rush to judgment. And now we're looking at it and we're going, OK, there's something else going on here. I don't. I don't want to believe that he planned it because I don't believe anybody would be sick enough to risk a race war in order to keep his job on a TV show. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that that's not true. He might have known these guys. These guys might have planned it. The story is extremely strange. But it's the media, in my mind, that is at fault about this because they created atmosphere that makes it quick to judge anybody. The assumptions 
are that this is the type of person who did it. It's the rush. It happened with Covington, and it happened here. And we don't know how this is going to end. We don't know. Yeah. What these guys did. These guys might be innocent. Who right. knows? And they would know. social media, too. Because yeah. when you have social media, so you, you have think... a rush to, to, to not only tell your version of All the story, right. which you think is true, but also to, to hate on everybody who disagrees. All right, coming up, Trump's latest physical creating a media firestorm. That's next, right here on The Five. President Trump's critics in the press now taking on a new role. Media weight watchers. Members of the media actually fat shaming the president after his annual physical results were released. Take a look. Listen, I don't care if he weighs close to 300 pounds. President Trump claimed that migrants hoping to illegally enter the country through the southern border would, quote, have to be in extremely good shape to get over his proposed border wall. <laughs> and that makes sense. He's in terrible shape, and he can't seem to get over it. He has yeah, a terrible to, diet. Yeah. To think that you're going to have his kind of vitals on that kind of diet is really uh, fantasy thinking. I know a guy who's six four, uh -huh. and weighs I do too. and weighs close to uh, two hundred forty pounds. Yep, he does not look like that. No, and, you know. No. But it's amazing they're even lying about. He's lying well, about his health. Well, he's li yeah lying about his health. I'm sure she's. Uh, when I saw this stat. Greg, the first moment I saw it said the left will not be able to resist. Apparently, 243 pounds is close to 300. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. No. Did they go to my school? They can't, yeah. do, they can't do math economically, but when it comes to your weight, I, w I think that they should put scales in front of the Morning Joe studio, in front of the White House press room, and then you should have, when you get in, before you get on there, you have to get on the scale and they have to announce your weight. I wonder how Mika would feel about that. Yeah. Because you know what? You can't talk about weight. If it's women, because that's called fat shaming. But if it's a dude, go right ahead. It's it's the it's another example of reverse sexism. And you'll see that in my new book, Reverse Sexism, coming out in June. I'm joking. But you know what? I'm kind of for talking about weight because when I was on Red Eye, I put on a lot of weight. And you know how I lost weight? Oh, I remember that. I had lost weight because everybody on Twitter was making fun of how fat I was. Oh, Is that true? Yeah. Wow. That's, oh, that, was, that was incentive. <laughs> Dana, <laughs> I, would, I would rather I would rather release my tax returns than my weight. Those are heavier. <laughs> Why? That's silly. Because, because you look fantastic. Yeah, you no, know, I'm just telling you that Greg is right. Women do not yeah. want to talk about their weight, and so President Harris or Ooh. Gillibrand or whoever Gillibrand. Yeah, it's Gillibrand. Sorry. Um, whoever it's going to be in the future, there will be a woman president. He's I lady in white. Gabbard? Yeah, Sosie Gabbard? Yes. Say her. Oh, right, President that's Gabbard. President that, that's Gabbard. easier. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's for the future. No, seriously. <laughs> honestly, I, uh, women are not going to want to do it, and I bet they'll be the first ones to say, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. Just like he said, I'm not releasing my tax returns. <laughs> yeah. One, and Obama was uh, Wait, famous. That was pretty good. I don't think that works, but that was pretty well, good. Well, Obama they, they was famous a fitness yeah. fanatic. Trump yeah. takes a different approach. Sensitive Does that reach. matter for the presidency? Well, I think what uh, people are picking up on here is much bigger, which is that you'll recall that when he was running for president, he had that unusual doctor here in New York who, it turns out, didn't even proclaim that he was in great shape. Turned out that Trump had written his own description of his health and then had it released to the press or leaked to the press so that he would be the most healthiest, greatest shape. And then last year, it was Ronnie Jackson who said, he's in the greatest shape, and then was later nominated for VA secretary, but didn't but make it. But the reason it. you do this is to see if the president is going to be healthy enough well, to be able to take care of the country. Yes, like, like, and that's the Making point. fun of his weight is not No, is no, not no. Newsy. I think that what right. people are saying is you can't trust that he's telling you whether or not he's in good shape or bad shape. You really I mean, people, think, people said, yeah, but, the, the one that caught my eyes was people said, hey, you know that guy who's, I think, a linebacker for the Chicago Bears? He's 6'3", 247. Boy, he doesn't look like that. That's great journalism. Mm. <laughs> uh, you, have, yes. you have me thinking, though, about, because there are a lot of women that are going to be running for president. How are they going to cover women? Because they're not going to want to talk about weight or physical appearance. you got to ask or, how much they weigh if they're or, doing the physical. Yeah, but, you know, because we're equal. Yeah, but Men and women they, are equal. Look what they do to Melania, though. I mean, they criticize her. But she's not president. Appearance. Right, so I'm saying, though, I wonder if it's just women on the left you can't criticize, but if, like, a, when a Sarah Page Palin was on that ticket. She got criticized left no, and right. I, I for, no, but to the point. About, you forget what they said about Michelle Obama. She could lose some weight. Her arms are too big. You she forget? was adored. Who was saying oh, that? I remember. Nobody here. Oh, oh, not, not here. Oh, 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 
you're going to regret. Selective you're going to regret, regret when President Trump lives to be 120 years old. Why is that? They were wrong. They were right. You were wrong. That what? That McDonald's hamburgers will make you live forever? They, oh. they do. And they do. I'll and say this in the military. Every time they do a height and weight index, I was deemed to be overweight. I, uh, yeah, yes. right. Like all yeah. of those indexes are yeah. ridiculous. I, agree. I don't know who they're for. Yeah, I agree. But Go. uh, we got to move. Sorry. All right. <laughs> a man. A man fends off an attack from a mountain lion with his bare hands. Ooh. That up next in the fastest seven. Welcome back. It is time for the fastest seven. Speed it up. Come on. <laughs> First up, shocking video showing the moment a 19-year-old Instagram influencer hurled a chair off the 45th floor of a Toronto mm. high-rise building, <gasps> crashing into traffic amazing? below. Thankfully, Crazy. no one was injured. The woman is now facing multiple charges, including mischief and endangering life. Greg? I outraged. watched this and my blood boils and we're doing it on my show tomorrow. It gets me so mad. It's how, how can luck weigh on your punishment? If the chair had killed people, it would change the sentence, right? right. But nobody got hurt. So she will probably get off with a slap on the right. wrist. Yep. That ticks me off. Dana, what do you think? Well, yes. And I also think Instagram, uh, they should have shut it down, right? Like, mm -hmm. like they should call, Instagram yeah. should call the cops on her. Mm -hmm. Pete, $2,000 uh, bail on this? That doesn't seem like enough. No, probably not. But it also strikes me as the type of foolish thing I may have done when I was 19. No way. No. You know, like, you listen, Pete, no. don't, don't say that. that. I, I, I didn't do that, and I didn't have Instagram. But when you're 19, you're foolish. You have friends. You not you have get I hear you. you they you should throw the chair you, at her. You, you served your country. You care about the, the, the this human was condition. Before, you wouldn't have done this that. This was before I served no, my country. No, it's in your heart. I would, I, I don't, <laughs> because my heart would not have wanted. So not, she okay. doesn't want to hurt anybody. I know what I you're saying. You're saying her brain isn't fully formed yeah, because she's a teenager. Foolishness lives in the hearts of kids. Dana, you, you don't have to defend Pete. He's a good man. His name's not Donald Trump. You don't have to defend him. What? <laughs> what do you I, mean? I, I tell you what I think. Oh. This is so interesting <laughs> that, in fact, what the police said, this was the highest reported case on social media ever. So it was the social media. media that, that got her. Broke. Yeah. Mm. But I can't believe that she's only charged with mischief, endangering life, mischief, damaging property, and common nuisance. Mm. They got to send a signal to the rest of the people that this, you can't do this. Should yeah. she get the chair? I think you do a lot of stuff. You do a lot of dumb stuff at 19, but if it was on a highway, I mean, highway is it's crazy. It's crazy. All right, Super we got another dumb. one. This one is crazy. A man <laughs> says he survived a mountain lion attack by killing it with his bare hands. Travis Kaufman was out for a run last week when he came face to face with the fierce feline. There was a point where I, I was concerned that I wasn't going to make it out of it. I knew with two, two pretty good blows to the back of the head that it didn't release, that um, I was probably going to have to do something a little more drastic. And then I was able to kind of shift my weight and get a foot on its neck. All right, I definitely oh. would not have survived. I would have been like, oh, come here, my baby, yes, spotlight. But you, of all the people I know, this would have been you. Well, I would have, I've rehearsed it in my brain. Yeah. Like, what would I do in that moment? You let him get a little clamp right here. You're going to take it in the arm. And then, then he you... dies because you haven't washed your hands in 20 years. Well, <laughs> that too, because I give him the germs that are all over my body. Yeah. Well, that's part of the approach. That's part of why I do it. Then, right. he, then he's uh, Good on this guy. You're ready to go. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Greg. Yeah, and he Someone else take it. And he didn't run, which they say, you know, a wildlife you know, expert was like, if you run, it, it activates their predatorial instinct. Jedediah, this is why I don't hike without my own mountain lion. I have a permit oh. to leash, believe it or not. I think I have a picture of me hiking with my mountain <laughs> lion. Yes, I had that done. Uh, so when I jog in the hills, I always have a mountain lion with when me. When I jog in the hills. That's yes. a bad idea. <laughs> Dana, would have you, you ever survive, jog in the hills? You Never. <laughs> uh, no, I probably wouldn't have survived, but I'd like to know that you could. Yeah, yeah. That's true. You know what? what? You this is the story it? of the week. I think this is, we should have been covering, but the thing was, he didn't come forward earlier, so we couldn't see him. His name's Travis Kaufman. So I was interested all along because I think, you know, can I, could I have done it? And I wanted to know his weight because initially they said the lion was 80 pounds, but now they say it was 40 pounds. He's only 150. He's no, nowhere as big as President Trump. Really I heard the lion oh, yelled, this is mountain lion there country. This is mountain, he had a MAGA hat on, didn't he? <laughs> yes. yes. Last one. But, the... but the great thing was Guys, that he's yes, choked him. Yes. I just think we that's wonderful. The next one comes from the worst commuter ever. Oof.
crowded New Jersey yeah. transit commuter train yeah. got chaotic after one woman refused to take her bag off a seat. One eyewitness saying people were irritated with her inability to act like a normal person. This would have enraged me, Juan. I would have said something. Would you have said something to her? Like, get your bag off that seat? Yeah, but I guess I would just move along. I thought she was a jerk, you know? Yeah. Pete? Kind of the same. Like, you want to think you would do the throwdown all the way, and at some point you'd be like, not really worth it. Yeah. But I respect the people that stay and fight right. all the way. Mm -hmm. There is some principle there, people. I could have handled her like that mountain lion. <laughs> <laughs> would you want to look? Would you want to know? Would you have said something? Because it's so rude when they do that. It, the thing is, like, sometimes you're just dealing with irrational people, so you just have to, like, get through it. Yeah, she almost got thrown off, and then she left on her own. Well, she's now doing outnumbered. <laughs> no, uh, that's considered polite in New Jersey. Did, I'll have you know. Yeah. New Jersey's. By the way, that was you, Jed. What? I could tell you had that you were wearing a wig. That was you. <laughs> do that. that was you. He's a terrible person. Uh, don't man. worry. You don't can't worry. Trust him on anything. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Fan Mail Friday's coming up next. This guy, man. Oh, I love that stuff. All right, the first question from whoever, uh, Macoma. Uh, what's the most expensive thing? that you have broken. All right, Pete. Mm. Expensive thing that I have broken. Probably a big piece of military equipment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a plane. That I was responsible for as the platoon leader signed for. Yes. And we made up stories, maybe battlefield damage. Oh, my goodness. As opposed to actual damage. How did wow. you break it? Uh, battlefield damage. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes, we're gonna leave it right there. Uh, you know, I was thinking, I, I, I guess my finger, you know, <laughs> uh, I broke my finger once because I got in a cab and I, the belt from the, the raincoat got caught outside mm -hmm. and when the cab took off, it went zoom and the hit my finger broke it. And that's pretty expensive. That's, that, is a, that is a crazy injury, Jed. I bought a beautiful piece of luggage from Italy and I had a green smoothie explosion. Oh, uh, same thing for the dress, I see. Be, yes, that's exactly <laughs> <laughs> You were getting that in somehow. He is. I said before. <laughs> Dana? I think it would have to be, um, I waited tables when I was in mm -hmm. college and I was home for the summer and I waited, I closed the restaurant. I got home really late, like two o'clock in the morning. My mom had let me borrow her Subaru mm. and getting into the garage. I didn't hit it. I, I got in an accident basically in the garage. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I had to go tell my mom, uh, but she was really nice about it. Uh, yeah, of course she Aww. is. She's a Perino. Most expensive thing I broke, Jessica Alba's heart. Oh. oh. Anyway, well she, she never recovered. No, no, her life has been downhill ever since. Oh, this is fun from Lisa S. When you're fed up, where do you go and what do you do, Juan? Uh, do the five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I never get fed up here. Uh, I would go play sports, uh, mm -hmm. especially if it's competitive. Like, in other words, I usually don't play basketball anymore with teenagers or college mm -hmm. players. But if you want to get aggressive, go play with those guys. Yeah. Jed? I go to the gym, but first I complain endlessly to a handful of people, my two best friends and my mother, mm -hmm. to the point, like, ad nauseum. I yes. never get tired of complaining. <laughs> Ever. Dana, what do you do when you're fed up? What I, do you... I always feel like you never regret taking a walk. Mm, that's true. Mm -hmm. You never do. So what do healthy. you take it to? <laughs> I just go for a walk. <laughs> oh, oh, a walk. Okay, yes. I thought you meant the.